I almost stopped her from leaving. But then Florence said something, and George said something, and I tried to say something. But between George's something and Florence's something, my something didn't have a chance. I know what you mean. Well, I don't. What were these somethings? What did they actually say? Well, it was sort of street talk. <laughs> street talk? Like what I say to you when I get really mad. Oh. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> I'm worried about her. She hasn't got a place of her own and no place to go. Where could she be? Oh, I'm sure when she calms down, she'll think it over and come back. I don't think so. You know, in her own way, Florence can be as stubborn as George. And you know how stubborn George can be. No, tell us about it. <laughs> well, George can be so stubborn. Oh. <laughs> See you later. So long, girl. Bye. You know, Helen, I can never understand why people waste their energy fighting. If they'd only take the time to think things through, there's always an answer to every problem. All right, Solomon. Suppose we had a maid who brought a man home without telling us. How would you handle it? Easy. I'd say, Helen, take care of it. <laughs> Let's see if you can take care of that. <laughs> Why, Florence, come in. Do you mind if I spend the night, Mr. Willis? No, not at all. Then I'll come in. <laughs> Hello, Miss Willis. Florence, I'm so glad to see you. I got a problem. Yes, I know. Louise told us all about it. Here, let me take your coat. <laughs> Sit down, Florence. Thank you. Would you like some coffee? No, thank you. Uh, how about a drop of sherry? No, thank you. You look all worn out. I bet you could use a little pick-me-up. Oh, I don't want to put you to no bother. Oh, it's no trouble at all. Well, in that case, I'll have a muscatel and ginger ale with some crushed ice and a juice of cherries. <laughs> Would you settle for a dry martini? If that's all you got. Coming right up. Lawrence, where have you been all day? Well, at first I just walked around, but it didn't take me long to figure out I was long on pride and short on bread. So I went over to TJ's house to see if he could put me up. Hmm, that turned out to be a big mistake. Wasn't he happy to see you? No, and neither was his wife and four kids. <laughs> oh, Florence, that's terrible. It sure was. But it's a lucky thing I found out in time because that man was really after me. But it's a good thing I remember what my mama told me, too. She said, Florence, a man is always going to sweet talk you. But until he says, I do, you don't. Don't worry, Florence. Someday you'll find a man who's right for you. Yes, there are lots of good men around. Hmm. The good ones are either married or dead. <laughs> Or both. <laughs> you know what makes me mad, though? To think I lost the best job I ever had on account of that turkey. And from the way Mr. Jefferson was talking, ain't no way for me to get it back, either. He can change his mind, can't he? I mean, any normal human being can be reasoned with. That leaves George out. <laughs> no, I'm serious, Helen. I'm firmly convinced that with the right approach, even George can be reached. Oh, Mr. Willis, would you do that for me? Oh, thank you. I knew I could count on you. Me? Oh, Tom, I'm so proud of you. I'll let Louise know you're coming. But, 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 but. That's it, Tom. Practice what you're going to say to George. <laughs> <laughs> she is. Oh, good. Uh-huh. Well, thanks for telling me, Helen. Uh, George, can I talk to you for a second? Sure. Well, Florence That's is... it. Time's up. 